In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace and peace of God our Father, our Lord Jesus Christ, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you always. And with your spirit. My friends, on the Sunday after Pentecost, we celebrate Holy Trinity Sunday, acknowledging and giving glory to God, who is three persons, a community of love. So as we acknowledge the love of our God, let us first acknowledge our sins, that our hearts and minds may be open to God's love, and we allow Jesus to meet us in our deepest needs. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned, that in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask the Blessed Mary and the Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. God, our Father, who by sending into the world the word of truth and the spirit of sanctification, may know to the human race your wondrous mystery. Grant us, we pray, that in professing the true faith, we may acknowledge the trinity of eternal glory and adore your unity, powerful and majesty. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Moses went up Mount Sinai 
as the Lord had commanded him, taking along the two stone tablets. Having come down in a cloud, the Lord stood with Moses there and proclaimed his name, Lord. Thus the Lord passed before him and cried out, The Lord, the Lord, a merciful and gracious God, slow to anger and rich in kindness and fidelity. Moses at once bowed down to the ground in worship. Then he said, If I find favor with you, O Lord, do come along in our company. This is indeed a stiff-necked people, yet pardon our wickedness and sins, and receive us as your own. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. A reading from the second letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. Brothers and sisters, rejoice, mend your ways, encourage one another, agree with one another, live in peace, and the God of love and peace will be with you. Greet one another with a holy kiss. All the holy ones greet you. The grace of the Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with all of you. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
God so loved the world that he gave his only Son so that everyone who believes in him might not perish, but might have eternal life. For God did not send his Son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world might be saved through him. Whoever believes in him will not be condemned, but whoever does not believe has already been condemned because he has not believed in the name of the only Son of God. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you. Yesterday, here in the Diocese of Davenport, our Bishop Thomas Incula ordained two men. Andrew Rombula was ordained a transitional deacon as he prepares to serve in the priesthood of Jesus Christ here in the Diocese of Davenport. And then Deacon James Flattery was ordained a priest for our diocese. And if this was a normal year, they both would have been ordained in our cathedral here in Davenport, surrounded by hundreds of people. However, this year, they were ordained in their home parishes with just a few people in attendance. But the diminished size of the congregations for the ordination does not negate the fact that this was a great day for our diocese. I got to know both of these men because they, as seminarians, have served here at Our Lady of Victory and we're truly blessed to have them serving here in Southeast Iowa. And this weekend, in addition to being the ordination weekend, is also the feast day of the Holy Trinity. So Deacon Ron Mueller and Father Flattery have to preach about the Trinity this weekend in their first homilies as deacon and a priest. And to be truthful, preaching does not get any harder than talking about the Trinity. And since I'm kind of missing baseball, let me give you an analogy. So this weekend, Holy Trinity would be as if you're in the seventh game of the World Series. It's the bottom of the ninth. You have a runner on third. You have two outs. And all you got to do is get a hit. And you win. Not a home run, not a triple, not a double. And you better not walk. You just need a hit. So good luck, brothers. And for us, friends, I'm going to take my own advice. We're just going to go for a hit. And to begin our discussion about the Trinity, let's go to the Catechism. Paragraph 234 describes the Trinity with these words. The mystery of the Most Holy Trinity is the central mystery of Christian faith and life. It is the mystery of God in Himself. It is therefore the source of all other mysteries of faith, the light that enlightens them. It is the most fundamental and essential teaching in the hierarchy of the truths of faith. The whole of salvation history is identical with the history of the way and the means through which the one true God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit reveals himself to men and reconciles and unites with himself those who turn away from sin. This mystery of one God being three persons also reveals another profound truth that I think we have to meditate on and pray about this weekend because of everything our country is going through. Since we're made in the image and likeness of God, we are created to love and to be loved, like the persons of the Trinity love each other and are loved by each other. Our God is love, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And we as their creatures, because of being in the image and likeness, have the capability to love. And we are challenged to love in imitation of the Trinity. 
Now, we can't be islands. We cannot be solitary, isolated by ourselves because it goes against how we're created. So people may think that they can be alone, that they don't need any relationships, but this can't be true. That's not how we were created. So we can convince ourselves that we can be alone, but the Most Holy Trinity, as revealed in the parable of the prodigal son, is always desiring to have a relationship with us. As you remember, the father of the prodigal son was always waiting for the son to return home. So again, even when we think we should be alone, the Trinity is always ready, willing, and by grace, is ready to welcome us back in the relationship. So the isolation of COVID-19 forced upon us is so painful because it goes against how we're created. We're meant to be with each other. We're meant to share our lives together. We're meant to hug and kiss and be close to each other. And now you know why you're anguishing and so much struggling with the isolation because it goes against your God-given nature. But it's for a good reason. But know that this is why things are so hard. And furthermore, for us as Catholics, not being able to receive the Eucharist, to receive the second person of the Trinity, body, blood, soul, and divinity, has added to our isolation. But brothers and sisters, we're almost back to public masses. Just a little bit longer. So because we're made in the image and likeness of the Trinity, we're called to love, we're called to be in community, and this is why things have been so hard. But the greatest source of division, the greatest source of isolation, is not actually COVID-19. It's sin. Every time we sin, Every time we go against God's love, every time we go against what we should do for our neighbor, we're separating ourselves. And sin causes three separations. It separates us from God, it separates us from each other, and it separates us from within ourselves. Our hearts and minds are in war with each other. All because of our sin. So therefore, all of the sin in our country, especially the sin of racism, all sins divide us. And God, who cannot sin, who is love, is calling us to turn away from this divisiveness, to turn away from our being separated, to return to love. And only God can repair what sin has destroyed. Thus our words of the gospel are so powerful today. God so loved the world that he gave his only son so that everyone who believes in him might not perish, but might have eternal life. For God did not send his son into the world to condemn the world, but the world might be saved through him. So God, who made us, also gives us the grace to recreate us, to bring us back into relationship with him, with each other, and also to make us whole. So as people of faith, if we want to root out racism, if we want to root out violence, if we want to root out any sin, we begin by remembering how we were made. We were made in the image of the Trinity. We were made in the image of love. So if we acknowledge our sin and open ourselves back up to the Trinity and the love of God, Christ, through the sacrament of reconciliation and also through our own prayer, 
will bring us back into the loving relationship with God and each other and with ourselves. So on this weekend of all weekends, the Most Holy Trinity, along with every, good per every person of goodwill in this country, is hoping that you and me will spend this time, spend some time this week, looking at ourselves and rooting out our symptoms. Because we are called to love. And we are called to be loved by God and each other. And we just have to be open to that invitation of the Trinity. And the Trinity will bring it to fruition. Together now, let us stand and profess our faith. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, Consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us men, for our salvation, he came down from heaven. And by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary, and he became man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day, in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended to heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to just the living and dead, and his kingdom will not have no end. I believe in the Lord the Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church, I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. As we celebrate the mystery of the Most Holy Trinity, let us bring these our prayers before our God. For the Church, drawn from all nations and languages, may our triune God guide and sustain us as we proclaim the good news of the kingdom, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For peace in our country and world, that all people may live free from violence in safety and security and with hope for the future, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all people who have been affected by violence, as they rebuild their lives, that they may find it in their hearts to move forward in peace and forgiveness. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For our parish graduates from all educational institutions, that they will be inspired to dream big, run strong, and soar high, and that the Lord shine over them and fill them with favor, so that the world is changed for the better because of their love and determination. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For civic leaders, medical professionals, and others coordinating a response to the coronavirus, may God give them wisdom and strength. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those suffering from the coronavirus, that God lifts them up in grace. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That the member, members of our parish and those of our sister parish, Christ the King, reach out to all who feel isolated and abandoned. We pray to the Lord. 
For the parish, all the faithful departed, all the intentions listed in our book of prayers, for all of our own intentions, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Holy God, great and beyond our imagining, we rejoice to call ourselves your daughters and sons. So please hear the prayers we offer you this day, for we make them all through Christ our Lord. Amen.
You are indeed holy, O Lord, the font of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and gave him thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks. He gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. church 
and graciously grant our peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you all. And with your spirit. This time you can make your spiritual communion at home.
Let us pray. May receiving this sacrament, O oh Lord our God, bring us health of body and soul as we confess your eternal Holy Trinity and undivided unity through Christ our Lord. Amen. This weekend, in a special way, we're honoring all of the graduates of our parishes, in our parish at college level and high school level. So at this time, please join me as we say a special prayer for all these graduates. So we pray for them and for all their journeys ahead of them in their lives. Lord our God, we give you thanks for these graduates, for the blessings they have brought upon not only our families, but also upon our parish. We ask as they move forward in the future, you may bless them and protect them. But most importantly, Lord, may they always know that you are with them. And as they are made in the image of the Trinity, they are called to love and serve you all the days of their lives. So again, we ask you bless them, protect them, and guide them home to your eternal kingdom. We ask this as we ask all things through Christ our Lord. Amen. And finally, thank you to all of you who donated items last weekend. We had another great weekend of donations. So thank you for the support you provide to our brothers and sisters in need. And also, please know that we will be back at Mass soon. Real soon. So thank you for your patience. And again, once we're there, we'll be able to bask in each other and the great love of the Trinity. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you. Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Go and announce the gospel of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
can make a difference. Go make a difference in the world. Go make a difference. We can make a difference. Go make a difference in the world. We are the salt of the earth, called to let the people see the love of God in you and me. We are the light of the world, not to be hidden but be seen. Go make a difference in the world. Go make a difference. We can make a difference. Go make a difference in the world. Go make a difference. We can make a difference. Go make a difference in the world. We are the hands of Christ reaching out to those in need. The face of God for all to see. We are the spirit of hope. We are the voice of peace. Go make a difference in the world. Go make a difference. We can make a difference. Go make a difference in the world. Go make a difference. We can make a difference. Go make a difference in the world. So let your love shine on. Let it shine for all to see. Go make a difference in the world. And the Spirit of Christ will be with us as we go. Go make a difference in the world. Go make a difference. We can make a difference. Go make a difference in the world. Go make a difference. We can make a difference. Go make a difference in the world. We belong to
called to share your word, Lord, in all we say and all we do. As our journey moves us onward, we belong to you. We belong to you, oh Lord of our longing. We belong to you. In our daily living, dying and rising, we belong to you. We belong to you. We belong to you. Seek to find the 